like to ask the Minister for Policy and Reform what the Council of Ministers' policy is on maintaining plurality of media outlets on the Isle of Man, free from state subsidy. On the Minister for Policy and Reform, Mr Thomas. Thank you, Mr President. The Broadcasting Act 1993 contains provisions under Section 3 of that Act and defined in Schedule 1 of the Act, which aim to ensure plurality of media outlets <coughs> in the Isle of Man, whether state-funded or not. I am advised that the Communications Bill will contain similar provisions. Mrs Kane, supplementary. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I would like to ask the Minister further, would that, given the Treasury Minister's earlier answers on Manx Radio, would he accept there appears to be a mission creep by, by Manx Radio going into TV and that this risks putting some commercial operators potentially out of business and reducing the number of independent media outlets on the island? Would he be concerned about that? Minister. Um, thank you very much, Mr President. Uh, Manx Radio, I believe, is a, a private limited company, although it's um, got the major shareholder, in fact, the only shareholder being the government. Um, I think um, radio, broadcasting, media in general have come closer together. I think there are many examples of private companies um, across doing exactly what the visualisation process is all about. Um, we, we heard it was... Uh, expensive to the extent of less than £3,000. I think it's an interesting experiment. I think the licence conditions are relevant. The Act uh, that I've cited, particularly Schedule 1, is relevant. And um, I'm, I, for one, are, are interested to watch the uh, results of this experiment. Honourable Member for Douglas East, Mr Robert Shaw. Thank you, Mr President. Um, Mr President, the Minister won't be surprised to hear that I don't subscribe to Le Monde, or perhaps even more surprisingly, The Guardian. Uh, what I do subscribe to, and again he won't be surprised by this, is to Netflix, like thousands and thousands of others, Netflix and Amazon. Others are available. I, and others are available. I also sub 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 subscribe to the BBC. I, I, like many others, I recently signed my cheque for £147, which cumulatively uh, to the BBC provides around about £6 million a year. I wonder... Mr. President, whether the Minister thinks that we're actually in over-focusing on the nuances of the local arrangement, whether in fact we're actually arguing about issues in a paddling pool, or in fact the deep sea issues, the £6 million going to the BBC. I ask this question particularly because I've always previously supported the BBC, but in light of the scurrilous and infantile behaviour of the BBC recently, which effectively has brought the concept of investigative journalism into disrepute, yeah, 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 yeah. does he not think perhaps it's time for us to sit back and think about how we support our local media and where we want to go? Thank you, Mr. Minister, to reply, and do not uh, feel that you need to <coughs> reply to every detail <coughs> of, of uh, the, the comments leading up to the question. Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me the possibility to constrain my answer, and I'll try to do that. <laughs> by, uh, by, uh, by chance, I brought with me a, a few paragraphs from the most recent review of public service broadcasting, um, paragraph 123 in the conclusions of that report um, made the point that a high quality public service broadcaster is essential to a properly functioning democracy. The Isle of Man is fortunate to have in Manx Radio just such a broadcaster. And I think the BBC, whatever any failings in coverage in one programme recently, is also a high quality uh, broadcaster, public service broadcaster. And I think the whole issues of public service broadcast are beyond those of a, um, a court, a parliament, a set of politicians feeling angry at one moment. To me, it's absolutely profoundly important for the functioning of a good democracy that we have a free media uh, in the papers, in the, in the radio and in the uh, television. The other point I'm minded to, uh, to say, though, in response to the Honourable Member for Douglas East's question is that paragraph 124 in the conclusions of that report was that... Uh, 
every five years, in fact every four years, a report like the one that came to us in 2012, 2013, 14 comes around. We've had 12 reports on the future of public service broadcasting um, in the lifetime <coughs> of Manx Radio. And it sounds like, from what the Treasury Minister has just said, that we are about to have a, another one and another debate. But I just wanted to put that another debate and another, and another uh, de decision in the context of the fact that we've had 12 of them in the life of uh, Manx Radio previously. And then finally, building on the, um, building on the, on the uh, point of uh, Manx Radio, BBC, competitors, we do have to remember that the licence conditions in Schedule 1 and in, in, paragraph, in Section 3 of the original Act do actually comment on links between newspapers and radio stations, broadcasters across and radio stations. They're all covered in the Act. They're all covered in public policy. One of the recommendations this Honourable Court passed back in 2014 is that we had to take great care to separate out what the subvention was used for and what it was not used for, the difference between commercial broadcasting and public service broadcasting. So I'm well up for the debate, as I'm sure every other member of this Honourable Court is, but this debate has gone around every four years, 12 times previously in the last 54, 53 years or whatever it is. Honourable Member for Middle, Mr Shimmons. Thank you, Mr President. Does the Minister agree with the assertion that journalists must be watchdogs and no dog bites the hand that feeds it? If so, how do we ensure a range of free press in our democracy? This sounds a bit like um, any question. <laughs> <laughs> Very good question, and uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll leave it to the minister anyway. <laughs> but uh, caution again. We are going to have a debate clearly on media issues before too long, and bearing that in mind, uh, minister. It's, 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 it's great when the uh, presiding officer can answer the question for the uh, honourable. <laughs> but all I, all, I, all I would say, additional to that, is. Um, yeah, freedom of the press is important, and also making sure that this is a public service broadcasting arrangement, not a national broadcasting arrangement, not a government broadcasting arrangement. Manx Radio can't be North Korean state broadcaster or whatever the name of the broadcaster out there. It's very important. That's presumably why it is a private limited company um, with directors, and, and the Treasury doesn't as itself have a director on the um, board, as far as I remember. That's presumably why there is a, we have a important people who we take very seriously who put there, who have um, governance uh, arrangements around them to make sure that they remember that they're there to manage a private company in the public service broadcasting interest, not as a state broadcaster. So the Honourable Questioner makes an important point and I think the um, safeguards are there and are adequate it seems to me. Honourable agree with me that maybe the reason that the debates come around every four years is because it's not really a level playing field and maybe now with Another debate in the offing, we can actually get a level playing field with uh, subsidies perhaps removed from radio. Minister? Just uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I, I suppose I just uh, put two, po two things on the table. Um, the first point is that public service broadcasting needs to be separated out. That's what the money is spent for. It's not spent to distort competition. And that's very clear in the recommendation that Tilda <coughs> most uh, recently. Um, put together. And the second point is government resources get spent um, all over various parts of the media, broadcasting, print media. Isle of Man newspapers take adverts, which various parts of government pay, pay for. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Berry put together a, what can even be called a white paper, a discussion document on some of these issues back in, uh, back in 2012, making some of these points and about um, what was the nature of the content and what you got for your subvention. These are very complicated issues. I think we should listen and hear our presiding officer, which is that we are, if we are going to have a debate about this again, we need to have a debate, not just a, a series of supplementary questions to this uh, honourable minister, genuinely honourable. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, could I just ask the Minister, would he not agree with me that whilst I understand the analogy referred to by uh, the Honourable Member for Middle about journalists being watchdogs and that we live in a small jurisdiction, that it's slightly insulting to journalists to assume that they might do other than independently uh, carry out their functions? Minister? 
Thank you very much, um, on, Mr. President, and to the Honourable Member of Council for that very perceptive and enlightening and, and truth revealing question. Every professional, whether they be a social worker or whether they be a doctor, whether they be a public servant in civil service or a media person, is professional and have professional standards that they're trained in and they abide to. And that's the most important thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. Honourable Member, Mr. Malarkey. Thank you, Mr. President. Could I, would the Minister agree with me that the Communications Commission has the responsibility to monitor and, uh, and look into any uh, breaches of licence within all radio stations on the Isle of Man, and that is their job, and that the, uh, the Act is clearly written out, uh, that the Max Radio cannot go outside certain parameters, and that, that is monitored on a regular basis by the Communications Commission. And in fact, they are, Max Radio are uh, uh, going to appear before the Communications Commission uh, next week. Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Mr President, and to the Honourable Minister for Home Affairs for that helpful clarification question. Yeah, under, con under Section 4 of the uh, Broadcasting Act 1963, conditions of licence are very clearly spelled out and the monitoring process is... Uh, is uh, spelled out there as well later on in the legislation, so that's uh, definitely the case.